Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to learn how to downgrade Windows 8 to Windows 7 on a Dell XPS. Alright, so what you'll need, you'll need two USB drives, a copy of Windows 7, and a USB mouse and keyboard. The first thing you want to do is take your USB key, the smaller one, this one is a 4GB, and you want to insert it into the USB slot on your Mac or PC. I'm doing it on my Mac here. You want to head over to this Dell website and you want to download two very important drivers. But before you do that, make sure that the operating system is set to Windows 7 64-bit and the importance is set to recommended just so it's easier to find them. The two drivers that you'll need which are super, super important are the Ethernet controller driver. You can download that here for absolutely free. And the next driver you will need is an Intel Rapid Storage Technology driver, which again you can download here for free. And both of these drivers will be saved onto your USB key guys, just like this. Now I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to have to switch over to a PC so I can tell you what to do next. So on a PC guys, you want to go over to my computer. You want to double click the, heart, the USB disk where your drivers are saved and you want to run both of the drivers. So you can see here we have the network driver and we have the Intel a driver that we downloaded before so go ahead and run the drivers it doesn't matter which order but you will not be installing the drivers instead when you run them it's going to give you an option to install or it's going to give you an option to extract without installing so you don't want to install it because that wouldn't make any sense you want to extract them and this is very important guys extract them to the usb that you that you downloaded these drivers to so in this case it is my usb which is the f drive and it's just going to go ahead and extract the files and it's going to basically, you know, push out a bunch of files like what happens when you extract a file. It may take a couple of seconds, bear with it. And then you want to do the same thing for the second driver. You guys can see here that it popped out uh, five files. You want to go ahead and do the same thing for the second driver. Again, order does not matter here. And again, you want to extract without installing. You want to... Well, this message is going to pop up just saying that the Realtek network adapter, network driver completed extracting. So you can ignore that and click OK. But again, guys, make sure you extract it to the USB key and nowhere else. And again, do not install it. Again, it'll push out a bunch of files and give you this message, which basically confirms that it, it has extracted. And basically, as you can see, that these are all the files. If you have to check or double check, if you're missing something, you can pause the video here and check. Now that we're done that, you want to take your bigger USB key plug it into the Dell XPS 8500 and format it. So make sure that there's nothing on this USB key or the, whatever it is, a hard drive, USB, doesn't matter. And you want to use the file system as a FAT32. And again, guys, please make sure there's nothing on here because everything will be erased. Go ahead and click start with quick format checked off and it will take a couple of seconds. This is a bigger drive, so it took a little bit longer, but it did end up doing it. And that's it. Again, you guys, you need a 32 gig of, or up or 16 gigs and up would be preferable. Now you want to head over to your Dell, which you already were at, and go to the search and type in, just type in Dell. And from here, you want to select your Dell recovery and media or media and recovery. Doesn't really make, doesn't really make a difference or backup and media. It doesn't make a difference, but you want to select the backup and recovery in this case, and you want to run it from here. You want to select rescue disk and then select your drive and then, you know, basically go ahead and click create rescue disk and press yes at the bottom of the screen. This will create, you guessed it, a recovery media for just in case something happens and we have to switch back to Windows 8 or something happens. From here, guys, you want to go to the right side of your screen where the charms are, go to settings, then go to change PC settings. And from here, once you've clicked that, you want to head over to general. And underneath general, you want to go all the way to the bottom underneath advanced startup and go ahead and click restart there. When you restart it, you're going to get, well, it's going to have a please wait screen, but shortly after you're going to get this screen here, you want to go ahead and click troubleshoot, not continue, and select advanced options. Under here, go to UFA firmware settings and go ahead and click restart. This will restart your PC, but this time you'll be entered into your BIOS. And from here, guys, you want to go to boot and make sure that secure boot is disabled. This is super important, so make sure that is disabled. And then once you've disabled it, go ahead and go to the exit, save your changes, and then reset your computer or restart your computer. At this point, have your Windows 7 disk handy because you'll have to insert it. So you'll probably be prompted by this screen. You want to go ahead and insert the Windows 7 media into your, you know, disk drive and then go ahead and press a button on the keyboard. Again, you need a USB keyboard and mouse. So go ahead and press a button and it'll start loading up Windows 7. You guys can see that the Windows 7 files are loading. 
this is the simple part. The next step is going to get a little harder because you have to format your hard drive. So once you get to this step here, guys, go ahead and accept the terms, click next and go to custom. Do not click upgrade. Make sure you click custom advanced. And from here, you're going to see a bunch of partitions of your hard drive. What you want to do, guys, is delete every single partition until you're only left with two partitions, which will be the primary partition and one more partition, which you cannot install Windows 7 onto because you're going to get the little message saying Windows cannot be installed onto disk zero partition, whatever it is. So go ahead and delete every single partition. You may have to do this more than once, but once you do it, I did it about twice. Once I did it about twice, I got that my partition two in this case, which was my primary partition, was capable of you know basically having Windows 7 installed on it. So again, guys, go ahead and delete every single partition until you're left with only two. The first one, you won't be able to install Windows 7 onto, but the second one, which is your primary, you should be able to install Windows onto that. Go ahead and click Next at the bottom of the screen, and that's pretty much it. Windows will start installing itself after you click Next. It's going to start loading the files and, you know, copying the files, expanding the Windows files, and basically doing what it needs to do. Once that's done, it's going to restart a couple of times, guys. Don't be afraid. Once you're into Windows 7, though, go to your USB key, and you want to install the drivers that we had previously extracted onto this USB key. So the Intel driver and there was an Ethernet driver because we will need to be getting onto the Internet. So please, guys, make sure you do that step. It is very important. So go ahead and install the Intel driver first or the Ethernet driver first. It doesn't really make a difference. At the end of the day, you should have both on that USB key and both should be installed. So we've done the Intel. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the Ethernet driver. Go back into your USB and then run the network driver setup, which does take a little bit longer, but it's not too long. I fast forwarded it here just to show you guys exactly what it looks like. Just for people that, you know, want to see what it looks like so that if they run into a problem or they basically want to just compare what they're seeing to what I'm doing here or what they're seeing here, which is perfectly fine. I just fast forward the installation. It takes about three to four minutes. So leave the computer for a while. Maybe we'll get a drink of water or something. Once it's done, guys, go ahead and uh, press finish. It's going to give you a prompt that says it's completed. Now you'll be able to set up your home network. Make sure you have a wired connection near you because that's the whole point of this Ethernet driver. So, you know, for that one time, just, you know, go ahead and set it up somewhere else. And guys, that's pretty much it. Now you guys can go ahead and to go back to that same website where you downloaded those first two drivers from and get every single, everything else for your Dell XPS 8500 for the Windows 7. Obviously, make sure it's ticked, that, but ticked on that, but that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks again for watching. If this video helped you, I'll give it a thumbs up, like it, share it, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, whatever it may be, and I will see you all in the next video. Thank you all for watching, and I hope, I hope it really helped you out.